Come with us as we continue our Grenada series and check out the dining options of Sandals Grenada. This resort boasts one of the best selections of restaurants considering the size of the resort. So we check them all out from the casual through to the fancy and not to mention the fun. And not forgetting all the treats and snacks. So come with us as we eat our way around this fantastic resort. So we start on the South Seas Village side of the resort at the Italian Cucina Romana, which was open in the evening for dinner and was our go-to for buffet breakfast as closest to our room. But also due to the excellent service and shout out to the hostess Laura, who was excellent. We also chose to eat here twice in the evenings as like all Italian restaurants at Sandals are a good old trusty favorite with a varied menu, which meant you had to come back to be able to try it all. Though judging by the amount we ordered, anyone would think it was our only visit. We also like this restaurant for its ambience as could come in dressed quite casually or dressed up and neither would be out of place. So now moving next door, we come to Kimono's, the teppanyaki stroke hibachi restaurant where you sit at communal tables of about 8 to 10 for your entertaining dining experience. Starters are ordered as normal while your chef prepares and then serves the main course. The chefs are entertaining and the theatrics are all part of the experience, though who you sat with will ultimately determine how much fun you have, but luckily we had a fun crowd. And remember, Kimonos does require reservations, as does Butch's Chop House. This is by far the most popular restaurant on site, so ensure you get your reservations in early. Our first visit was a little disappointing due to a large noisy group who had basically just covered up coming straight from the pool. All other butchers we have visited require the more formal dress code and I'm pleased to say following feedback this has since been enforced. We fed this back to the general manager and great to see that they have listened as this really is the must do restaurant on site and the venue most choose to celebrate a special or memorable occasion. Being a, a little bit predictable here in both for exactly the same thing which we had the other night, which is the Dungeoners Crab Cake, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And then just to be really boring, we've both come to the ribeye as well for Maine, as we both had something different the other night. I had the tea bone and you had the mixed seafood grill. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and of course, actually, we lost mac and cheese, of course. Gotta so get the lobster fix in. We've got our steak and my lobster mac and cheese. Lobster's not in season. Apparently you can go to jail for catching lobster at the moment. I think it's worth the risk personally. Our second visit was much more on point and was still our favorite restaurant on site. Now the last eatery on the South Seas village side was Dino's Pizzeria, which was in fact the only eatery open during the daytime on this side of the resort and we only tried late in our stay due to the carbs. The selection and quality of the pizzas was excellent and of course was a convenient option to grab a bite if not wanting to leave the pool area. However meant that if you wanted a sit down lunch you had to walk to the other side of the resort to Spices or Neptunes. Now moving over to the Pink Gin Village side of the resort we come to Spices the Caribbean restaurant which we only tried once for breakfast as buffet offerings were pretty much the same and for lunch a few times where we loved this terrace but did find the portion sizes quite large. We also came here for dinner as the Caribbean restaurants are usually our favourite. However, we did find the menu was a lot more limited than the other restaurants and the venue was never particularly busy so lacked a little bit of atmosphere. And although we had a good meal, the outside terrace at night could be impacted by noise from the living room, subject to what was going on. Now on the ground level, you will find soy sushi that was only open in the evenings. Now this was a much larger soy than others we had visited previously, which had a great standalone bar with fab cocktails, separate to the usual sushi counter. 
So we're going to um, break in the sushi virgin over here, who's uh, never really had it, so we're going to go for a bit of a mix tonight. Not big on salmon, <laughs> not at all. Or shrimp. Or shrimp. So limits our options a little here. So we're going to go with some snow crab here, the champagne lobster which we thought they were out of, which I was going to be really gutted about, but uh, lucky it's in. The, uh, Futo maki roll, which is basically sashimi with cream, cheese and seaweed. And then we're going to go brave. We haven't learned our lesson already. We're going to go Caribbean dynamite, which is a snow crab with eel dynamite and some chocolate. What could possibly go wrong? And although neither of us are big sushi fans, both thoroughly enjoyed it and would visit again. Some sake, so yes. bottoms up. So if you're enjoying this video, please remember to watch others in our Sandals Grenada series. And most importantly, we please ask that you hit that like and subscribe buttons. This really helps us support this channel and to bring you more content like this in the future. But back to the tour in hand, we now come to the French restaurant Le Jardinier, which was open for breakfast and dinner. This was our go-to for breakfast if we had the time, as was served a la carte as opposed to buffet, and the menu choices were fantastic. And so much so, we apologise that we neither filmed the menu at breakfast or in the evening, as was a little distracted by the setting and the food. We also ate here a couple of evenings, which didn't require reservations, but did ask for the slightly smarter dress code with authentic offerings such as French onion soup, which was a hit, and every meal we had here was fantastic and was on par with Butch's as one of our favorite venues. And then continuing down to the beachfront, you will find Neptune's. This Mediterranean beachfront restaurant was open for lunch and for dinner when we tried it on our arrival night due to its fantastic setting. And we found the menu had lots of seafood options more so than spices, so we chose to go for the mussels and the clams. However, we only ate here once in the evening, as became our go-to restaurant for lunch, mainly due to the setting, including this great little beachfront bar, but also due to the menu options, which had a good variety of dishes, which meant we were able to eat here multiple times without repetition, Portion sizes were a lot lighter than, say, at Spices, and many of the offerings were much healthier options, which, considering the amount of times we ate here, was a bit of a blessing. However, all of our good intentions at lunch were usually undone by the afternoon when we headed to our guilty pleasure, Café de Paris, their on-site patisserie. Open from early to late, I would pick up iced coffees in the morning, and again in the afternoon before heading back to the room, but of course usually accompanied by some kind of pastry or ice cream, and was residence to our favorite member of staff in the resort. This is the lovely Rachel. Yeah, the spices, which works in Cafe de Paris, and she is incredible. She's really made our trip there. Been in here morning to get morning coffees and usually late tonight. Yes. Uh, she's been here throughout and uh, special to Rachel usually means uh, basically abusing me. <laughs> but she's great, she's very, very playful and uh, love normally means she says she would you like some love in that. It normally involves lots and lots of alcohol. Oh. <laughs> so you may have seen the little clip we did about the Rachel special. Yeah, there's basically every alcohol in there with only a tiny bit of coffee as well. But what a yeah. lot of love. Yeah, it's a lot of love. There's a lot of love this girl. We have a lot of love this girl. Yeah. She's been amazing. And you're in Grenada, you gotta try. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> you're in Grenada, you gotta try the nutmeg ice cream. You only get it in Grenada, which is really good. And my favorite, of course, is the coconut. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you so much, you've been amazing. We appreciate it. And lastly, we come to the Tipsy Turtle, the English pub, which was the only venue that we didn't eat at on site. Mainly because it would have felt like a busman's holiday having English pub food plus had more of a sports bar feel than other English pubs we've been to at Sandals. Now another key element of dinner was either pre or post drinks, which on the Pink Gym Village side would be the living room, which would usually be quite low key pre-dinner such as pianists, but then switch out to the more lively performances 
later in the evening. Though don't take too long at dinner, our seats here go fast before the performances. On the South Seas Village side, by their cluster of restaurants, the bar here became our favourite hangout. One as a smaller and more intimate setting, and two live music from various musicians and singers. Which now wraps up the end of our dining guide. So in summary, for a resort of only 225 rooms, much smaller than the normal sandals, you get way more restaurants, which as a result are all less busy. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out others in our Grenada series or alternatively one of our other destination videos. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.